Hello, and thank you very much, Alex, for being here today. It's very nice to meet you, and uh, I'm very happy that you joined us today. So do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, Patrick. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this uh, uh, interview. So I'm Alex Cohen. Uh, I'm the founder of Synchronized. Uh, it's a film studio that was created in 2000, so it's almost 24 years old. Um, wow. We are um, distributor, domestic distributor in the United States. So we acquire rights of IPs, film series, documentaries, and we exploit them either in the US or worldwide, depending on the exclusive right that we acquired. And so we have a growing library with new release every month. Um, and we are above 350 IPs of film series, thousands of hours of content. Uh, we don't really have a specialty. We are very mainstream. We, we have lots of animation, horror films, action, and thriller. We go with what um, the audience is trending with. I can tell you that um, this year will, you will see a worldwide a massive afflux of Christmas movies, romantic movies. There is a great return into those tendencies. So we are sticking with uh, the genre. Um, so um, like every single distributor, we also produce. Uh, producing helps us own our IP, which is the same as an acquisition, but we own them for perpetuity. Um, and owning in perpetuity worldwide um, is something that um, we are very uh, interested in because um, uh, that builds a, a library, doesn't have an expiration date. And believe it or not, Patrick, firms are grossing money we have we own the right of a film with Brigitte Bardot um, that was shot in 1952. That wow. still makes a lot of digital money every week. So the people that filmed it in the 50s did not imagine um, that in 2023 their movie will be streamed by a whole wide of audience. Um, and that's uh, that's the beauty of this industry. Um, you are um, when you are doing quality content, you kind of inscribe yourself into history. So we are very active into production um, budget that range between one to thirty million dollars per project. Of course, series are more expensive because there's more episodes, more content. Um, so um, when we are building those projects, we have partners all around the world, in Europe, in Asia, and in the US, uh, that are um, uh, investing, funding into those projects that we generally pre-sell uh, to the streamers or to the studio that will exploit them and make a lot of money for a very long time. Um, there is really two kinds of projects in this industry. You have the very independents that are putting very, a lot of money at risk um, and trying uh, to find an agent that will successfully find a distributor like us. And you have uh, the seasoned producers that are never building any project without knowing that they already have distribution, they already have all the outlet, what is the revenue, what are the projections. So in this spirit, uh, we want to speak about stay safe because this is um, the essence of our first partnership that we are very, very honored uh, we to work with uh, your company. Um, and um, so stay safe is um, a supernatural thriller um that has many many twists in the story um we are not here to tell the story the audience will watch the film which will be anyway available worldwide in all of the streamers um, um when it will be released very soon um, but the the important fact is that the success of a film is always different and uh, a film that's been very successful 20 years ago is not necessarily what the audience wants to see. Today, we are we have realized as distributors that there is a fatigue in terms of watching content. Number one, because before be, with the amount of platforms exist and the, um, the tremendous choice that exists, but mainly, and I'm sure you told yourself the same thing, it's always the same story. The scripts 
and the films and the series are very, very similar. And mm -hmm. that gives a fatigue to an audience that's not only an audience that was 20 years ago, it's an audience that has been educated because there's a lot of content. They know what sucks, they know what's good. And it's a different kind of audience. That is why when we are producing, the first thing we are looking at is a script. We only want to do elevated genre films, a story that has twist, a story that will leave an impression to the audience and possibly will have them talk about it and enjoy it. So that's what we did with Stay Safe. We added many interesting background um, unsaid situation. We made it in the middle of the pandemic um, um, settings in 2020, 2030, as, as, as it spread it for many years and the world has learned to live kind of in a dystopian world. And we, we picked this script because it's elevated, because the story um, is powerful and because this is a type of story that will speak to the most wide audience. Um, as we have been very interested um, about the Web3 world, about Meta in general, uh, which is an additional outlet, the same way that we have been jumping on streaming uh, when, it, when it started, because um, when, when Synchronize um, was operating at the beginning, only DVD uh, was an acceptable outlet to, to, to make revenue. So we, we strongly believe that with the hiccups that the metaverse is seeing, that the NFTs are seeing, it's, those are great signs because those hiccups were seen when streaming arrived. You mm -hmm. had the bootleg, you had websites starting to appear, offering, um, uh, you know, Juarez films. Uh, to, to be able, and a lot of the audience went in it because they didn't have the money to buy the DVDs, but then the streaming is arriving to um, a state uh, that you guys in Europe have not reached yet, but we have reached it in, in the US. It's called AVOD. Um, it's platforms like Pluto, like Tubi, like Freevi, that are offering you almost as much content as Netflix, and you don't pay a subscription per month. You oh, watch, wow. yeah, you watch commercials, and the commercials are replacing the subscription, and it's a win-win because the platform still makes money, and you didn't have to pay to watch your content. So this is already spread for a couple of years and becoming very fast the strongest outlet. So when what the struggle that's happening in the marriage between content and Web3 is totally normal. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work. We believe in it. So we um, partner with a great team in the United Kingdom called Infinite Digital um, um, that connected us with you, connected us with the Web3 world, the people that are relevant in your industry. And we want to make sure that uh, we maximize um, the advantages of connecting the film industry and TV and the Web3. That's why for Stay Safe, we decided to um, do something that's groundbreaking that has not been made before. The film is in late post-production, almost mm -hmm. days to be available for screening. Uh, and we are offering users all around the world to own a piece of the film by buying an NFT that's not only going to be a beautiful, by the way, digital image, but at the same time, a real piece of share of the ownership of Stay Safe in all the revenues that are being made worldwide and in perpetuity. This is an NFT that can be resold, that can be that can be uh, kept, um, but generally. If you look at the comparable sales of films, only by looking off films, not even the films of Disney, which obviously have a much larger yes. investment, um, the returns are two to three from the investment of the of the budget, 
and someone that's buying an NFT today based on the production budget could see a significant return that comes to him in a short time, but at this also will will get residuals for, for the rest of his life, uh, as long as, because again, with the example that we gave with the girl in the bikini, the Brigitte Bardot movie, good films are always making money. And when we produce our own IP, we want to make sure that we are doing in temporal stories, stories mm -hmm. that will be cool in 20 years. Um, so hopefully you will enjoy Stay Safe and um, all of the audience will as well. And um, we'll have smart people following us on this first project that will obviously whitelist them to all the future projects that we hopefully, hopefully will do together as well, uh, series and films, um, and have them become producers have them make money and enjoy at the same time. That sounds incredible. Uh, I, I have to say, I, I really like the concept. Um, you're, you're essentially making film investment accessible to everyone, which is brilliant. And um, and this is only the first step and it can go in so many directions. You could even fund completely new movies uh, that way and you can do so much with it. So I, I'm really excited. Um, I think this is gonna gonna make some huge waves, and um, yeah, I think you answered all my questions before I even <laughs> had the chance wow. to ask them. But um, thank you so much for for this very short interview, and I'm looking forward to hearing much more of you. It's my pleasure, Patrick. It's really um, uh, a honor um, to to talk to you because I've I've looked at the development of your company. And uh, having a strategy, having a vision that's long term and building a relevant team is really showing your true colors. So I wish you um, a great success. And uh, hopefully we can do many, many projects uh, colluding our both worlds. Um, and and, and that, that's the reason why I love the Web3 world. It's because the essence of the organization is is sharing, is yes. opening. And this is something that doesn't exist in the real film industry. Um, so we we have to adapt and we we have to uh, make sure that, that, that projects are accessible uh, and transparent for everybody. And uh, thank you for listening to me and many more to come.